Nina Sundergaard, you are a historian and the uh, chief of Nerd Tours in Copenhagen. Yes. And you would like to uh, give us a brief uh, history of the city of Copenhagen. Yes, yes. If you're visiting Copenhagen, you might want to have a bit of a historical background of this uh, wonderful city and uh, like what shaped Copenhagen. I single out some four factors that uh, shaped Copenhagen and uh, I think if you removed any of them, you wouldn't be able to see the city that you're seeing today. Okay, what's the first one? It's a sea. Um, the sea is what made Copenhagen. Um, we have some nice access to the sea and we still have that. Um, you can see that if you're a cruise passenger, you will see the most important asset of Copenhagen. And 900 years ago, all Copenhagen was was a harbor, which gave it its name. Hagen means harbor. Oh. Yeah, and the sea is uh, still very important because uh, Copenhagen is uh, home to the largest shipping company in the world, uh, which is quite apt because uh, the Danish name for Copenhagen means the harbor of grocers. And uh, the sea is also an attraction because you can uh, fish and bathe in the harbor. All right, so the city grew around the uh, the maritime trade. Yes, exactly. And it uh, became more prosperous. Yeah, well, the king lived here uh, and the trade was good and uh, the city grew around it and uh, we built ramparts to protect the marketplace. All that trade made us rich and some bastards wanted to have a part of it and uh, that was really the story of uh, Europe beforehand. Uh, lots of uh, small uh, states constantly at war with each other. We really hated each other's guts. Uh, so Copenhagen turned into a fortress city. Did the ramparts help? Not really. Uh, it sort of kept out the Swedes in uh, 1658, but it didn't stop the British bombardment in 1807. But the ramparts did play a, a major role in the formation of Copenhagen because no one was allowed to build and live just outside them. Uh, the army needed clear shooting ground uh, in case of a, a nasty enemy attacking. Okay, so everyone was living inside of the ramparts. Everyone, yes, uh, and that meant that uh, Copenhagen became really densely populated, uh, much more dense than uh, Manila or Mumbai today. And uh, that was a lot of people, but don't uh, forget uh, there was also cows and horses and wow. dogs. And, yeah, that was really tough, that. Uh, and I believe some of these, all these people played with fire as well. They did, they did, at least twice in the 18th uh, century, and um, Copenhagen sort of burned down, at least a third of it. And uh, the city had to rebuild a lot of her houses for the 6,000 uh, persons who lost their homes in the fires. So that meant that uh, Copenhagen was uh, built in the early uh, 1800s. Um, Lots of simple houses for the bourgeoisie and with nice colors and a small frieze. Very simple. There was a tax exemption uh, on apartments on uh, 25 square meters or less. And that uh, stimulated a lot of uh, building of houses. But these houses were quite small and the apartments were without kitchen or bathrooms and or other luxuries that we need today. Okay, so the uh, so the old houses are mostly gone, but uh, what about the uh, the street grid? The street grid is, is uh, still medieval. Okay. Uh, so lots of nice crooked streets that you can get lost in. Yeah. So that was the um, the sea, the war, and the fire. Yeah. And what's the what's the what's the fourth? That's poverty. Yes, poverty really helped shape Copenhagen because. Uh, Copenhagen was uh, dirt poor uh, in, say, the 1970s. Oh, that late? Really, yes. Uh, Copenhagen was at a low here because uh, Copenhageners with their kits and money moved out to suburbia into nice houses, big bathrooms, uh, family kitchen, gardens, playgrounds. 
That was actually some uh, 12,000 Copenhageners every year in the 70s. And that left students, elderly, gays, hippies, socialists, prostitutes and some uh, petty criminals inside the city. But that also meant bad finances for Copenhagen because uh, all the big plans for remodeling Copenhagen, they didn't happen. We didn't have enough money to do that. So we were spared uh, some of the ugly uh, things that happened in, say, Stockholm. And it also gave us Christina. But why is that? Because uh, some uh, hippies um, uh, occupied the former uh, Navy area and because uh, Copenhagen was so poor, nothing was really done about it. So we still have Christina as a legacy of that. Be- because they didn't have the money to throw them out. Exactly. <laughs> that is, that's, a, that's, that's a very nice uh, side effect of uh, poverty here. Yeah. So when did the, the sea change happen? When did the poverty uh, stop Somewhere in the mid-90s, uh, people started moving back to Copenhagen, and nowadays it's like a uh, thousand people a month moving into Copenhagen, making it a very livable and very expensive city. Well, thank you very much, uh, Nina Sonnegård from uh, Nurtus, for this bit of background about the Copenhagen city. And you are most welcome, and uh, enjoy Copenhagen. <laughs>